What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and oh my goodness, we just got to experience the Ark of Osiris Alliance Battleground firsthand, and it is far and away the most fun I have ever had in Rise of Civilizations. It's like all the awesomeness of war with none of the penalties. In fact, you get sweet loot. Yeah, this was so fun. If you like the deep strategy on how to conquer your enemies in the Alliance Battlegrounds, you should totally like and subscribe because we're going to cover that on this channel. And we're going to give you literally everything you need to be successful in this game type. And it is insanely fun. You will want to be successful. So my friends, we were invited to join the Sons of Sparta in Kingdom 4 uh, to see what these Alliance Battlegrounds were like. And man, is it awesome. It is awesome. There's a bunch of things that uh, we did not know how to do, and we learned on the fly. We had a strategy going in, and I think the strategy was really sound. Um, big thank you again to King Bob for reaching out to me so that uh, I could kind of see how this Alliance Battleground stuff all worked. So with that said, we're going to have the footage rolling in the background, and I'm going to narrate some of the most important things that we kind of learned experiencing this for the first time, and there was a lot to learn. Uh, the interface is different. There's th things are very different, uh, but much is the same. So let's talk about what happens at the start of the battle. You will see when the timer ticks down for your Ark of Osiris event to start that you can then join the battle. You click that button and you get a war camp that is teleported into the battleground. And there's like a three-minute timer that ticks down before the battleground event ultimately starts. Now, we went in with a strategy, and the strategy I thought was really cool. They had squads that were pre-assigned, and they ultimately split their forces going down both sides of the map. Now, there's a bunch of ways you could run this. You could focus your alliance to go one way, or you could focus your alliance to go another way. And in fact, you're going to notice that we realize very, very quickly that the enemy did that, that exact strategy of focusing in one direction, which I think is very, very powerful. Of course, it left them a little vulnerable on the other side. Now, it's worth mentioning that in this matchup, we had almost a 200,000 power advantage. I mean, oh, sorry, 200 million power advantage. It's a really big deal. So you would kind of expect with that kind of a power differential that, that this you know, would be a battle that we would win. But you're going to see at the start that things get really dicey, and the enemy in this particular instance plays incredibly well. Uh, there's a lot to talk about with that, by the way. I think generally the, the reason the matchmaking was maybe so spread in this particular instance is because there's not a lot of kingdoms to pull from yet. There's only 16 kingdoms worth of alliances. And so assuming that Sons, Sons of Sparta is at the top end of what an alliance could have accomplished, and look, they're in Kingdom 4 and they're the alpha in that kingdom, then yeah, it's not too surprising that there weren't a ton of other alliances of equivalent power to pair with. I think that as this expands to cover more alliances, that's going to be a more equitable set of matchups that you get, and over time, that's only going to get easier and easier. So with that said, a core part of the strategy in Ark of Osiris is leveraging the obelisks, capturing them, and after you've held it for three minutes, you can then teleport to the obelisk. And you're going to see in this video that we freak out a little bit and panic because we can't figure out how to actually teleport. We were looking in the inventory and it can't find it. We can't find a teleport item to use. Um, and it turns out, then in the upper left by your buffs, there's like a tiny little arrow, and you click that, you tap into that, and there is a territory or battleground teleport that you can use, and that is how you get around the battleground. So we end up not being able to reinforce our obelisk nearly as quickly as we had intended to, and that is largely because we were sitting there unable to figure out how to teleport in, and we had entire war camps, multiple, just waiting for that moment for it to capture boom, and then teleport in. Um, so I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to learn and very, very important. The other thing that's very, very important is that he, there's no help button. Something we figured out very quickly is you can't actually enter into your city. And that's a big deal. 
So there's really only three things you can kind of do with your city in this game mode. You can see who has reinforced you, and you can still be in reinforced, by the way, which I think is very important, and we'll talk about that. You can see who's reinforced you. You can heal your troops, which does does not cost resources, but you can use speed ups. And so now healing speed ups get a lot of use and value. And then lastly, uh, you can change your garrison commanders, which is going to be super relevant uh, for defending your war camp. And by the way, you, you probably will at some point be defending your war camp if you port, especially near the front lines. Now, I say the front lines. Uh, in this case, you can only teleport within a radius of your obelisk, which could be a heck of a battle zone, which you're going to see here. Man, it gets a little bit dicey. So I think that's really interesting. And for a second, I want to talk just about some of the strategy that we could have employed, uh, which is that I'm pretty sure you can still teleport with a army having reinforced your city. So what we could have done is had some of the folks that were in the initial groups that were going out to capture the obelisks put an army within our city and we could teleport it in. That would be relevant if it's like a slower city or a slower army. The other thing you could do is like if we needed the battle groups to switch sides, we could have had them reinforce a city and then pour it in like that. Anyways, I think there's some strategy to be exploited there and I'm eager to figure out what those things are with reinforcing cities and then teleporting. So... Those were some of the really big things that, that we noticed. Another thing that was really crucial is that you can launch a one-minute rally in this game mode, and that is excellent. A one-minute rally is the right length of time for folks to figure out, am I joining or not? And look, you should know which rallies you're joining and which rallies you're even launching because, and I think this is a really big deal, every single player in your alliance should be in voice chat. Hands down, you need to be in voice chat. We were in voice chat together. It was very, very helpful. We had people watching other live streams to see kind of what they were doing in the battleground. That's actually how we figured out how to teleport was someone else was watching uh, someone else's live stream. And like, by the way, by the way, the alpha player, one of them from, from Sons of Sparta, I don't think was in the voice channel with us. And so they didn't, they couldn't figure out how to teleport the whole time. And like, I wouldn't have figured it out either. So anyways, the little arrow up by your buffs, click it. That's how you teleport. Big deal. Um, another thing that seems super important to me is that if you are healing up your troops, be very careful to not heal too many troops. And I'm warning about that because if you do decide you want to use speed ups, you might not have wanted to use like... 10 or 20 days of speed ups to heal all your troops. But if you queue up that many troops, that's what you're stuck with. And the only way you can get them back is if you heal through it with speed ups. So I'd be very, very careful. This event only lasts an hour. So you honestly don't get that much healing done unless you're using your speed ups. And by the way, troops are the key to this battle mode. I mean, look, the strategy is important. The troop count is very, very relevant, and I know that the route Sons of Sparta went is to see how many players were available in this time when they schedule it and had a high troop count. So getting the high troop count players makes you, I think, really well positioned, especially if they're like higher tiers of troops, um, because by percentage, your power is more troops, and the troops are crucial. The troops are crucial. At the start of the battle, we played around with sending out lots of armies all at once. And while there is strength in that, I think you might actually be better off sending fewer marches out at a time, but using the very best commanders you have available because you only have an hour. And by the end of the hour, you will probably run out of troops if the battle is hot. And dude, it gets hot. It gets hot. Over the course of this event, I think we had primarily skirmishes of kind of like two on two all the way up to, at some point, like a 10 on 10. Plus, there was stuff with rallies going on. It was really fun. It was really fun. Now, all the same shenanigans for rallies apply here. Um, you can reinforce those rallies. And it's worth mentioning that I am pretty sure that the points on the map do not qualify as garrisons. So I don't know for sure, but I'm 
don't think you want to use garrison commanders to defend those. Uh, you're going to want to use other commanders that are uh, very high skill levels. And, you know, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that because they don't count as cities either, right, they don't count as cities, I think that the talents related to cities, particularly the conquering tree, I don't think that stuff applies. So in the video here, the Julius Caesar is specialized in the leadership tree, and they actually get Name of the King, which is the very top talent there. They also make their way to Effortless, which is a build that I would recommend 10 out of 10 if you are the rally leader for your alliance. Seems very, very strong. They also picked up Armored and Armed to the Teeth, which are off to the side in the leadership tree. Now, one of the main objectives in this mode is to basically capture something in many other games that will be called a neutral bomb. There's something in the center that you have to march back to one of your structures. And, you know, what I think is important about this is a couple things. First of all, you take something like 200% more damage when you are holding that relic and you move 50% slower. So you have to protect the person who is carrying it. Otherwise, they are going to get super wrecked. You cannot actually tank while holding this thing. Not effectively. The other thing uh, that I think is really important here is that there's a little bit of a cooldown before it respawns back in the center to be captured again. And something you can do, and this is a common, common tactic in this style of game mode, is simply hold on to the objective Put it near where you can turn it in, but not actually turn it in. And you can even run all the way back to where your starting cities are, I think, and just like hang out there with it. And I don't think your enemy will ever want to enter that area. So something you can do if you are losing map control is to just hang on to it in a safe place rather than turn it in so that you don't just give it away to your enemy if they have a stronger strategic position. You can force them to change their posture. And I think that's a very, very powerful tactic. Now, one powerful tactic that I didn't think of while we were in the battleground, but I think could be insanely powerful, is if you manage to take an enemy obelisk, what if you have a bunch of cities teleport in, and then you start rallying their cities that are already near that obelisk? You could do serious work with one-minute rallies and a bunch of cities that are right next to each other. Like, oh my goodness, that strategy would be nuts. You would inflict so much pain, and look, you, again, you only have so many troops. So anywhere you can get edge with rallies is a really big deal. It's a really big deal. Okay, so overall, overall, the, the, the strategy you want to employ with regard to your troops is to be very, very intelligent with who you attack and when. And the reason I say that is I mentioned earlier, you only have so many troops to last you for the entire hour. So from this point forward in time, war on your kingdom is a catastrophically bad thing for the kingdom, at least for your ability to do alliance battlegrounds. And I love that this game mode will hopefully make people think twice about starting wars in their kingdom, because look, like the kingdom needs to be, in my opinion, a relatively safe place. It needs to be a relatively safe place so that you can get strong for KVK, which Alliance Battlegrounds is not KVK, so that you can get ready for the Karak Ceremony um, and so you can sleep at night, right? Like losing troops is kind of a frustrating experience. So this game mode, I think, creates a very, very healthy incentive for alliances to coordinate. And that's an incentive that didn't exist before. It's an incentive that didn't exist before and I think is really great. I am very excited about that. Now, um, you know, one thing you will see in this video is we kind of ponder changing the garrison captain, knowing who should be in command of a, of a uh, point on the map is very important. And... Typically, the easy answer is you probably ought to switch it over to your highest uh, leveled or your highest power level players because their technology is just so much better. It makes a huge, huge difference. Now, you'll probably notice in this video, we're using a Minamoto uh, with 
one of the new commanders, I can't remember who it is offhand, and also Tsao Tsao with uh, Lancelot. And that was simply to try to get many marches going at the same time. Probably not the route I would go again, but something we did do that I would 10 out of 10 recommend is we rocked a uh, Boudicca Joan of Arc combo. And Boudicca Joan of Arc was here purely for those sweet, sweet buffs. Because those buffs are absolutely crucial to benefiting everyone who's nearby. Now, if at any point you want to, you can look at the score up in the top, and that's going to give you a sense of how this thing is going. And I think you shouldn't spend too much time obsessing over what's going on there, but I will mention that within that view with the swords crossed, you can look at how many players are in the battleground at this exact moment. I believe it ended up being like 27 verse 26 or 27 verse 28, which, you know, is a, a pretty good amount of people, but like some folks didn't show up. And man, other people in the Alliance could have attended, they could have benefited, and it, it would have been a big deal. So I don't know, I would kind of recommend that... If you say you're going to go, you really do need to show up. So one other thing that I would be thinking about, and then maybe I'll sort of cut out and let the sort of event play out and you can watch the whole thing. Maybe I'll put music to it, is that you can see and join rallies and cancel rallies from the bottom left uh, flag icon. And that was something that we were not able to figure out right away is like, how do you cancel a rally? We were not sure. And so we had one rally hit a point that like we ended up taking already because <laughs> we couldn't figure out how to cancel a rally. Lower left is where you see the rallies and you can scout in this game mode and scouting is really crucial. That's something we did for great effect to kind of learn what the enemy armies were composed of, what was defending certain points. You can also use buffs, and the buffs are a really big deal. Every buff that you've popped um, counts here. And so army expansion, I think, is absolutely crucial for this event. Uh, in this case, we were using a 10% damage boost, but also a 5% damage boost token would go a long way. And your Alliance research, to me, seems like it'd be a really big deal, uh, especially Rally March Speed seems even more important. Now, something that has always been the case and is even more true in this game mode is that you really don't want to be doing a swarm attack against a player's city that has a lot of troops or against an objective that has a lot of troops in it. What is a swarm attack? A swarm attack is when you attack with many armies hitting the point all at once. You really want to do strategic rallies in this game mode. That is crucial. Uh, otherwise, you are going to lose a lot of troops, and you'll see in the footage that swarm attacks are punished fiercely. Ugh, fiercely. Do not do a swarm attack in this game mode. You are really going to regret it. And I will add that you'll see we had army presets made prior to entering the battleground, 100% you are going to want to have army presets before entering into here so that you can focus on the action rather than focusing on like swapping commanders around and making all that happen. And although I really love that in this game mode, you can like free swipe to make your uh, army go somewhere or attack someone. One problem that I sort of had is that you can't actually get an army to leave your city that way. You can't actually get an army to leave your city that way. So you have to like find something to move to, to get the army to even be in the field, to then go somewhere. And that's super relevant because you generally don't want to attack an enemy right away. In the same reason, here's what I mean. For the same reason that in the Mighty Governor event, if you're killing farmers, um, you don't want to just like attack the farmer with a 10-minute march because they're going to have 10 minutes to react. You go to a nearby thing. And right before you get to the nearby thing, and when you're actually next to your desired target, you swap right away to what it is you want to hit, so they have no time to react. They wouldn't know that they were about to get hit until it happened, or if they were watching. The same is true in this game mode. If you attack somebody's army with like a 10-minute walk, and there's no, maybe 10-minute walk, but like a 2-minute walk, they're going to know you're coming, and you don't want to do that. So find targets that are nearby, 
walk toward where you want to go, and hopefully you pick a friendly target, and then, boom, swap over before they can actually have a chance to react. My friends, I hope you enjoy this video. This game mode is far and away the most fun I've had in Rise of Civilizations. I am super, super pumped to play the heck out of this game mode. I hope it's very frequent. And if you've got any questions about Alliance Battlegrounds, drop them in the comments. We'll be sure to address them as best we can based off of what we learned. And until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.